Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. Today's video is all about making notes. Notes about your photographs, your photography, notes about your darkroom work and so on. I've been asked about this topic many times and I've been slowly but surely putting together this tutorial. Now when I take photographs, I like to record the data on what I'm taking. For instance, I like to know what the weather was or the camera and lens that I used. I like to record the developer that I used for those negatives and other notes about the type of development that I did for that film and the adjustments I may have made for the process. There's also a lot of information I read online or in books that I have and I want to make notes of that somewhere. Importantly, I want to be able to make these notes out in the field, here in the dark room, in my home, and know that they're saved safe somewhere. Another thing, I don't want to lose them if I change my platform. You see, at the moment I use Macs, but what if I switch to a Windows box or Linux? I use an iPhone, but what if I change to an Android? I want to make sure I have access to these notes. I want to make them as future-proof as possible. This is the start of a new series on how I've achieved that and how you can too. So before I go any further, I should really demonstrate what I'm talking about. So I'm now recording the screen on my computer and I've got my notes up. And as you can see, it looks very clean um, and easy to read. Uh, this is the name of my note file over here. And this here is my index. I'm going to demonstrate how I use this and then we'll go into how to actually recreate this for yourselves. My patrons will be getting a copy of my notes as a starter for themselves to work from. So thanks very much for your patronage. Uh, and this is something you're going to get this month from me for that. For the rest of you, just follow along and you'll be able to make this work for you too. So here's my notes, here's my index. Let's first of all look at a couple of photographs that I've put in there. So if I click on this link, it opens up another pane uh, with a list of some photographs that I've put in to my notes. And let's take, for instance, the whiskey shop. So click on the whiskey shop and here is that photograph. Now, what it's showing me actually here is held on my computer. It's not inside the notes. This is great because it's a reference to that photograph. So if I'm on my phone, which has limited storage, uh, I, I'm not trying to upload the whole photograph, which is very big. Um, I've scanned at a very high resolution, so I don't want these huge files moving onto my phone or anywhere else. Um, but on the computer I can see it. I will show you though how to actually upload photographs into the notes so they will show on your phone uh, etc. But this one is referenced and underneath you can see I've, I've written some notes underneath about the photograph. Uh, it's FP4 developed in Thornton's Pyrocatchin 2 bath etc. Now interesting look at these. These are links. And if I click on this, for instance, the developer, it opens up another pane. And here is the developer. This is how to make it. These are notes I've made on using the developer. So you can see how these files, the photograph itself, the developer is linked together. They're also backlinked. So I can go back from the developer to any photographs that have used it. And down here, you can see I have two photographs that have used this particular developer. So I can go back and have a look at this one. Oh, Logie House, let's see. Oh, there we are, that's nice. And so on, you, you get my gist. Um, so this has used that developer as well. Um, and there it is, look, it's linked down below. Click on it, it opens up that file. So these notes are all linked together. Let me just close this pane and I'll close this one as well. And this one. We're back to the top two that were opened 
Um, underneath the index, you also see Darkroom. So let's click on Darkroom. Here's a list of developers and films that I have in the Darkroom section. These are all links. So I can click on any one of these links. Let's have a look at HP 5 Plus. And there are my developers I use with HP 5 Plus, the EIs I choose to use. Remember, these are all available on my phone in the field. So if I'm there and I've got a short length of HP 5 in my camera and I'm looking at the photographs I want to take and I think, you know what? They'd be really nice in FX 15. I can make sure I set the correct EI. I've got an idea of how long it's going to take me to develop it. I can even look up FX 15 and see how to make it. This is all available wherever I am. I can also add notes to this. So here's my FX 15 page. Let's add some more notes to it. So I just click this editor button here and it opens up the editor and I can add a new line underneath. Let's see. Um, a great Crawley developer. One of my favorites. And I just save it. And there it is. There is the new note that I've added. It's also been saved everywhere else as well. So I can access that on my phone immediately and it's all updated. So as you can see, this is a really exciting way of keeping your notes. I particularly like that everything is linked together. So whatever I'm doing, I can link back and forth between a photograph and a film, and I can go back to the photograph. So everything's tied in. It's like having a second brain. I need a second brain. I can't remember all of this stuff. So to have this with me all the time is terrific. So that was a quick demonstration of how I use this note taking application, if you like. It's free of charge. It doesn't cost a penny. And I'm now going to go into it and we're going to build a very simple note taking app for you. You can follow along. You can stop the video, do the bits I'm doing and make your own. Remember, my patrons, you're going to get my notes free of charge. I'm just going to send them to you anyway, so don't you worry about it. But for the rest of you, just follow on. So the first stage of using this note taking application is to download it from the internet. So again, I'm on my desktop computer and I've pulled up tiddlywiki.com and you'll see it up here in the address bar https colon slash slash tiddlywiki.com it will bring you to this page if you scroll down on this page you'll get to the second section here is getting started and here is where you can download an empty tiddlywiki file and this is a very basic template file which you can then edit and change to be just like mine. And we're going to do that. We're going to use this empty file. But while we're here, let's just go a little bit lower. And here, just underneath that, you can see available methods for saving changes. Now, because of security in modern browsers, we are unable to save the changes that we make in our tiddlywiki file. But this allows us to download free software, which does make us, or rather enables us to save those changes. So for instance, if I click on this button here, Mac, I can see all of the little apps that will allow me to save changes on my Mac. TiddlyWiki Desktop is the one I actually use, so I recommend that one. It's also available for Windows. If we click on Windows, TiddlyWiki Desktop is the same app by Jeremy Rustin, who's actually the writer of this note-taking application, this TiddlyWiki application. So he's created this marvelous application to help you save when you make changes. Now, also here we have Android and ways of saving if you have an Android device and iOS if you've got an iPhone or an iPad. And I use Quine 
on my iPhone and iPad. It allows me to link to my Tiddly Wiki file and make edits and changes and see it when I'm out in the field. So those are some basics to understand. Um, just below that we have community links here which gives you demos, tutorials and all kinds of instructions if you want to delve deeper. Hopefully by watching my next videos you will um, understand enough to really get going. All right, so that's how to download it. So I'm going to just download it right now. I'm going to scroll down here and click download and then we'll jump right in to editing our first tiddly wiki file. Now you might remember I said that the tiddly wiki notebook file is unable to be saved because of modern security in our browsers these days. So remember at this point we need to go down and select some saving software that's also free of charge. This is all free to use. So for me I have a Mac so I select Mac and I'm going to use Tiddly Desktop. This is the best one. I've tried a few this. I really like Tiddly Desktop. It's so easy to use. Unfortunately, it's also available for Linux and Windows, so it's the same software for all of them, which is great. It means we can follow along with this tutorial and everything will look the same. So basically, just click on this link here. It will take us to another pane where it explains that this is the latest release of Tilly Desktop. And if we want to download it, go here. So I'm going to click on this, which takes me to the software page for Tiddly Desktop. There's a list here of different Tiddly Desktop versions, Linux 32, Linux 64, Mac 64, which is the one I want, Windows 32 and Windows 64. So I'm going to select Mac 64 and it will download that file for me into the computer. Let's open up my downloads folder. So here it is downloaded. Now, first of all, this one in downloads, empty.html, that's actually our tiddlywiki notebook. And that's what it calls it when we downloaded it. And here we can just see tiddly desktop is just downloaded and that needs to be installed. So I'm going to install that on my computer with a Mac. I'm just going to drag it into the applications. If you have Linux or Windows, you'll have to install it. I don't know how, but I'm sure you do or somebody near you will know how. Now the Empty HTML, I'm going to rename to photography.html because that's going to be the name of my notebook file. And in order to access that file from my phone, I'm going to need to put it in my iCloud drive. So I'll be dragging it into a folder in my iCloud drive. Now, if you're on Windows or Linux, you'll have to maybe use Dropbox and put this file into Dropbox and then use Tiddly Desktop to access and save the file in your Dropbox folder on your computer. All right, so I'll get on with that now and then I'll get back to you and we can start editing our first notebook Tiddly Wiki file. So I've installed Tiddly Desktop and I'm now running it and it's absolutely blank. There's nothing in it at all and that's just fine because we're going to add our photography notebook file now. So there's a few things along the top here. What I'm interested in is this add wiki file. If we're going to click on that and it's going to open up our uh, finder. Um, and or Explorer in Windows. That's what I was trying to think of. And I'm going to select my photography.html file. Remember we renamed empty.html to photography.html. So there it is. And I'm going to open it. Let's put this in the middle there. And there it is. And this is how it looks when you very first open your notebook. And what it's doing here is it's actually giving you a hand. It's letting you do set up some settings uh, to get it just right. 
and I'm going to make a little edit here. At the moment, it's calling itself My Tiddly Wiki, and I don't want that. So I'm going to edit it down here. I'm going to delete that, and I'm going to call it Photography. So that's going to be the name, and you can see it appeared up here as I, as I typed it. Now, this went red. Did you see that go red there? That means it needs to be saved because there's changes. So I'm going to click that save. Down here is the tagline. I can change that if I want. Uh, let me see. I'll change it to uh, dark room and photography notes by John. That's great. And down here are the tiddlers. Um, this is a tiddler. This pane that opened is a tiddler. Uh, do you remember in my demonstration there was a pane with a photograph in it? That was a tiddler. So these are the default tiddlers that will open when you first start your Tiddly Wiki notebook. And at the moment, getting started, this one will open. Well, I'm going to delete that and I'm going to change that to index because that's the one that I want to open. You know, it doesn't actually exist yet, but we're going to make it. So here we are. We've changed all of those things. And if you've changed yours, just save and then just close this pane. Now here is a plus sign, and this is how we add new tiddlers. So I need one called index. So I'm going to click plus and it comes up with a, a template file or an editor to allow me to add that new tiddler. So I'm going to call this index. Remember to spell it exactly the same as you did in that earlier uh, set getting started pane. I used a capital I and then small case for the rest of it. So I'm using exactly the same there and click on that arrow. And there it is. It now exists. And it actually, if you saw that, it automatically saved that change. Let's just prove to ourselves that it did really save that. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to kill it off. There. Boom. It's gone. Now, Tiddly Desktop has remembered the file we opened, and it will always remember it. It will be in here for us every time we start up Tiddly Desktop. So all I have to do is click Open, and it opens it up. Look. Boom. There it is. And in fact, it's opened the default that I wanted it to, Index. So make sure you can get that working first before you go any further with this video. Rewind the YouTube video and do that again until you can get to this stage here where you've got your index showing and then we'll carry on. So I need to edit the index file. Now let's go through some of these buttons. Up here we have close, which closes uh, this tiddler. We have the edit button, which looks like a pen with uh, writing underneath it. And then we have this drop down arrow. If I click that, there's a list of other things that I can do, other commands, if you like, that I can do with this Tiddly Wiki file. We'll cover those either today or in later videos so you can really understand all of this. Now, what I want to do is edit this index file. So all I have to do with the pane is click on this edit button here and it goes back into this editor again. And down here in this area is where I would add things. Now, I want two sections to start with. I want my photographs section and I want my darkroom section. So let's make the photographs and darkroom sections. Now, watch this. If I just type photographs and darkroom, and notice that I put two returns between those. Oh, I spelt that wrong. Let's just get rid of that there. If I put those two words in there and just click this tick box to say, thank you, I've edited it. That's good. Boom. There they are. It's put them in for me, but they're not links. I can't click them, but I want them to be links. I want them to take me to a tiddler with a list of photographs and to another tiddler with a list of darkroom stuff. So I need to be able to do that, but I can't. Let's see how. Click on your editor again, and this time, where it says photographs, give it 
two square brackets at the front and close the two square brackets at the end. And do the same with darkroom, two square brackets at the front and two square brackets at the end. What that does is it turns these into links. It's as easy as that. Click the tick box to say, yep, I finished editing. And look, they've now become links. Now at the moment they're in italics and that's telling me that there's a link there to a tiddler, one of these panes, that doesn't exist yet. If I click it, it will create it for me. So click photographs and it's now made that tiddler and it says it's a missing tiddler. If you click the edit button, it'll create it. So let's click on edit. Boom, there we are. It's now created that tiddler. If I click the arrow to say, yeah, I'm happy. There it is. And look, it's no longer in italics in the link. Let's do the same with darkroom. Click on darkroom. It opens up a temporary tiddler waiting for us to create it. All we have to do is click on edit and it's created it. I don't even have to add anything down here. I can just click the arrow, the tick box I mean, and boom, there it is made. No more italics look. And that's actually, they exist now in our notebook. If I close these, I can just click them and it will instantly open them. They exist. So that's how to edit a tiddler and how to create links within it. Let's look over here. Remember this plus sign that creates a new tiddler. So if I click that, for instance, there and call this one Castle Rig and click the tick box. It's created a tiddler called Castle Rig. There's nothing in it yet, but it's created it. We can close that. Here is the settings. If I click that, I can go into the settings here and you'll notice some of these will be what we've done already. We, we changed the title of the tiddler up here to photography. We changed the subtitle here, this tagline. Uh, oh, I spelt that I should put a capital D there, Bon. Uh, and so on. And there's other settings here, the default tiddlers that I want to open when I first start up my file and so on. Lots of settings there. We'll cover some of those in later videos. This is red. I want to save. Sometimes it automatically saves and sometimes you need to save, but it will always tell you if you need to save because this saving arrow will go red. Down here is a search bar. So if I wanted to search for Castle Rig, as I start to type, it brings up all the matches. I can click on the match and there it will open it up for us. Very useful. Here I can empty that search field. And down here are four tabs. The open tiddlers, the recent tiddlers, and this length, this list grows as I use tiddlers, so it's easy to jump back to one that I had edited or brought up earlier by looking at recent. These are tools. We'll cover those in a later video. And again, we'll cover this in a later video as well. So that is the beginnings of editing your Tiddler file. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there until next week when we're going to start adding photographs and linking those to developers and other notes that we want to make. But before I go, just to make this really useful, remember from now on you can just start adding your own notes here. You can just click on this file, on this plus sign. It opens a note. You can call it anything you want. Um, let's see, what's this going to be? Uh, YouTube videos. And you can start editing all sorts of stuff in here and making notes. Remember to show linking photographs and so on. Just click the tick box 
it's now made my tiddler with my notes in and saved it automatically because that's no longer read. I think we've got enough for today to get you going. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel, like this video. I'll put out more like this. Next week, I'm going to be showing you how to add your photographs to your notes, how to add developers, how to link them all together and start to build your second brain. Thanks ever so much for watching. Thanks to my patrons. I'm going to send you a pre-made notebook for you to get going straight away. Goodbye for now.